my fellow guitar addicts, I'm Caesar, and this is Addicted to Guitar, where we are everything guitar. So I gotta remind you right now, saw what you're doing, look down there. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and then the bell will come up after it. Hit all, because you're gonna want YouTube to let you know when we're doing new videos. We're doing new videos all the time. And today is the third installment of the Addicted to Guitar vlog. It is brought to you by the number seven, the letters E and J, and this, Sterling Sub Cutlass. I believe this is a, I don't know if it's a Daphne blue, but it's definitely a light pastel blue. This is a pretty sweet guitar, I gotta tell you. What I'm really digging about it is this heel. This curved heel uh, it just feels so comfy. The access to the upper frets is just, it's just awesome. You can really get up there too. So yeah, really digging it. This is uh, the second one of these uh, Ernie Ball, I don't want to call them knockoffs, but the lower level ones. Before Sterling was around doing these guitars, uh, there was a company called OLP, the Officially Licensed Product Guitars, and I had one of their Axis model guitars. And they're actually pretty sweet guitars, especially for the price. These guitars, I think, are about 250 275 new. I think you get a really nice guitar out of it. What's great is the neck. Uh, this feels like the same neck that was on the OLP guitars. I'm not sure if it's the same neck that's on the American Ernie Ball guitars. It doesn't feel like a Fender C-shape, that is not what it is. It's a little rounder and not much wider but a little fatter and I want to say it fits in your hand a little deeper so if you're an thumb over the top guy and a little out of tune there we go it seems like the fatter necks fit into your palm a little better So, if you like the fatter necks, these are kind of cool. You know, owning this guitar makes me want to look into the Ernie Ball Music Man American Cutlasses. So I really dig it. Uh, something else that's really cool about this guitar is the tremolo has the little wing here. So you don't always need the bar to, to get to move it. And that's actually pretty helpful because when you have these saddles and you don't have a locking nut, the G string tends to go out of tune. Especially when you do a big bend like that, when you go back to it, it's a little out of tune. And you have to reset it. And it gets better. Um, so if you don't have the locking nut, you definitely need a way to reset the guitar after those big bends. So that lip is kind of cool because if you don't have your bar on, you can at least reset everything so everything kind of slides back into place. I'm not always sure if it's here at the nut that that happens or if it's here at the saddle, but you know, these guitars where you go through the back with the ball end and then you don't have the locking nut, that tends to happen. That's a fairly common problem on the Fender six screw bent saddle ones and even the two screw bent saddle ones. That's just part of the deal. I don't know if you guys notice, but every time you watch Hendrix playing live, he does just various dips after he does some stuff or after he does a really intense solo, he just goes real quick. And uh, I think he knew too that you just have to reset the tremolo to put it back into tune. You can't go chasing the tuning up here because then you'll always be out of tune. Um, but I dig it. You know what I also like too is the one volume and the one tone. 
I have a G&L guitar and they've got a really cool setup too where they've got the two tones but instead of being the front pickup and the middle pickup they do a, um, a treble and a bass which I think is a great way to wire up three knobs. So if you have the three knobs, I actually think I'm doing, uh, thinking of doing that to some of my American Fenders. Because it's kind of cool, you can roll off the high end and you can roll off the low end and you can kind of shape it a little more. I think that's a better way of using that third knob than having a tone control for the middle single coil. I don't know if anybody ever adjusts that one. But that's pretty cool. I do love this guitar. I do love the fact that the truss rod adjustment is here kind of like those it's a little easier to do especially on the fly and especially with the string tension on I find that up here the Allen wrench up here with the neck on full tension is stiff and I always think I'm going to break the rod but this one seems to rotate a little easier the only problem is finding something that's strong enough but still thin enough to fit in the holes but if you guys have ever seen the wheel truss rod adjustment down here they're actually pretty cool so, um, so yeah I'm digging it this is the vlog, so I'm just telling you what's going on. So that's this guitar um, in the middle of learning Moby Dick by Led Zeppelin. So the, the slick SL57 up there is tuned down to drop D, so I can do that tune. And, you know, the more I play those slick guitars, the more I like them. You know, when they come out of the box, they're real stiff, and uh, everything is kind of uh, sharp around the edges. But as you play them and you kind of soften things out, they end up playing really well. I just got my transistors from Beaverton, Oregon. So, how killer is uh, the town named Beaverton, right? Sounds like something out of a cartoon. But I got my transistors, so I will be breadboarding some pedals soon. I'll be doing some videos about that. So, if I do blow my house up or blow my fingers off, I'll let you guys know too. You know, I had a friend about 15 years ago who had done some uh, DIY lighting setups. He was a drummer and they had some uh, small pyrotechnics that they had kind of made and they were all run by a nine volt battery and he was always missing part of his middle finger. And I asked him one day what happened to it and he said that I guess they had miswired it and when he plugged the nine volt battery in, the battery exploded. And it wasn't a big explosion but nine volt batteries have little rods in them, two little rods for the poles and one of them shot out and it blew the end of his finger off. So I'm always a little worried about DIY stuff with 9 volt batteries. So I think I may wire up a, a power transformer just so that doesn't happen. But if I do blow myself up or the house up or blow my fingers off, I will be sure to let you know because, you know, how exciting of a video would that be? So that's about it. Thanks for tuning in to the vlogs. I hope you guys are digging them. I'm trying to be more personal and just talking to you guys about what's going on with me. Um, yeah, and that's about it. Oh, I'm wearing big boy pants. I did have a viewer who mentioned that staring at my hairy thighs wasn't the most professional, so I am wearing my big boy pants. So hopefully you guys are enjoying that too. I don't even know if you can see my pants at this angle. But if you can, you cannot see my crotch, so there. And that's about it, guys. So thanks for staying tuned. Don't forget, if you're digging what we're doing, look down there. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Or if this is the end of the video, there should be a big balloony thing right here that you can click on and subscribe. And down here pretty soon, there should be some other videos to watch. Please check them out because we're doing new stuff all the time. And even our old stuff is pretty good because we are addicted to guitar and we just love guitars. All right. Thanks for staying tuned. Peace.